All right, so I am continuing to work on my final frame. And so far, all that's really changed with it is moving the ears and kind of making the skin a little less uh, grainy looking. And then I also cut a little bit from the hair. But now I want to I want to really make it into something that looks different. So I'm going to do some major adjustments. I'm going to take the whole thing, the whole underlying structure, and I'm going to transform it a little bit. And I'm just going to stretch it up. Oh, I need to have it visible. There we go. So I'm using control T and instead of just stretching, I think I'm actually going to use warp and I'm going to change the outside edges a little bit. And this is a great way. I have all the assets. I can give more subtlety to things like the eyes. It's like rolling dough. I can push them back and forth a little changes the mouth. I can change the chin slightly. just so it's not a circle anymore, but just very slightly, because I haven't been making those changes all along. And now with the hair, I'm just going to start painting right on top of it, you know, like I've been doing. Take a brand new layer, use clone stamp, it's set to current and below. I'm going to set it to 100% opacity. And I'm going to set it to a little bit smaller, a little bit harder. Maybe, maybe even a little bit smaller there. Wait, each emoji you have in each separate folder is supposed to be a PNG file? Each emoji you have in each separate folder. So... We created all of the files in the different folders just by duplicating layers before. So they're just internal copies. So they don't have their own file format until we output them. But when we output each frame, we're going to save them as JPEGs. Well, when you imported the assets, what file format were they? Yeah, the, I imported a PNG, so it didn't have a background behind it. And then sometimes I, I opened up a PSD and then I brought individual layers over. So it just depends how many assets you wanted. Professor, I have a quick question. Yeah. So I'm trying to color some of the eyes to make it look like they're closing. Okay. And I'm working on one and I used the, the pipette thing to get the color of the skin. Yeah. But whenever I use the brush it comes out white and not the color of the skin so you want to check are you using photoshop or photo p photo p okay so you want to check your foreground color box so sometimes when you use the color picker this happens more in photoshop than in photo p it will strangely pick it and put it into the the background color instead of the foreground color and I don't know how that happens. It happens every semester to students. And it, the only way to undo it is to like reset Photoshop and re reset all the initial preferences, you know? Okay. Whereas Photo P, every time you open it, it has its initial preferences. So let me see if I can reproduce what you're doing. Do you have a, a layer style? Uh, overlay. Okay, so the blending mode is overlay. So try changing it just to normal so that you can always change it to overlay later. But you want to be able to predict what your brush is doing, right? Now it looks normal, but what if I add what if I add the effect back then it does? Yeah, so it's the effect whenever you do a layer style, like for instance, I'm just drawing some hair now. If I turn on a layer style for it, like inner glow which I, I've been using. 
It's going to make the hair glow, right? And so no matter what color I choose to paint with, like I can paint blue, I can choose blue, it's in my foreground color. A, a, a shortcut while you're using the paintbrush or the clone stamp or anything is to target, right? You hold down option to target and that will change your color. So we'll learn more about that in digital painting. Just like with clone stamp, you target to, to copy from particular pixels. Okay, what is option for a computer? Uh, it's alt. alt. Okay. Yeah, alt option. Options on Macs, alts on PCs. Gotcha. Okay, but you see how everything's turning out yellow, even though that's not the color? That's because I have this layer style turned on. And as soon as I turn that off, it will be what I predict. And that's why we don't do too many of these. That's why we don't do clipping masks and things. Because you always want your tools to be predictable, right? If you're in a drawing class and you pick up a red pencil, you want it to, to be red. If it's a different color than what you chose, you're gonna throw that, that pencil away. All right, so the hair is looking better to me. Come on. Yeah, so I like that. Now I can play with uh, the overall color because I started those shifts before. So what I'm gonna do is take all these layers, these three layers within my assets folder, and I'm going to hit Command J to duplicate them all. And it makes a copy of all three of them. And then I'm going to go to layer, merge layers. And that will put them all together into one. And that way I can adjust the color on just one layer. Instead of having to do little color alterations all over the place. So I'm getting the sense that with this, we have a little bit more freedom as far as how exactly we do stuff. Yeah, with each new assignment, you're, you have more creative freedom. It's really only those initial exercises where I, I was telling you exactly how to do everything, which is why I was able to put it step by step in the, in the descriptions. But now that you've gotten introduced to a lot of these, these tools, now I'm just trying to show you the overall aim and it's up to you to find the best way to get there. Because it's not the best way for everybody, it's gonna be the best way for you. And then for our final project, by the end of the class, I'm hoping that you'll all pick and kind of create your own digital art technique combining only the types of digital art that you enjoy the most and you really want to show in your portfolio. And for some of you, that might be animation. Who knows? All right, so I've put it all together. I'm going to start changing the expression a little bit. But now that it's all merged, I can go to Adjustments, and I can play with the colors, right? And I'm going to, just like we did, in our compositing projects, I'm gonna start with levels. And that shows me I have some pixels to erase here. And then I'm gonna go right to color balance. I just want them to look kind of grimier and grimier. From that to that, right? In between frames to make stuff smoother, you still want us to limit it to nine folders, just add multiple frames within one folder? No, I'm, if you're going to add frames between your keyframes, you're going to create a new folder. So if I wanted a frame between 8 and 9, I would create a new folder that was 8.5. And I'll be showing you that in a second, once I have my nine frames working. All right.
Now I'm going to go to the big guns with hue saturation. Set on master. Oh, I kind of like that. And then I'm going to even refine it by just going to red. Because that red's a little intense, so I'm just going to take away some of the saturation on the red. And then I'm going to intensify the yellow. So this is targeted hue saturation. Then I want to play with the cyan a little bit, see what there is. Yeah. All right, now I'm just going to do some, make a new layer on top and just do some direct painting some more. I'm going to give them some variation in the mouth. Not very much, a little, because I haven't really committed to changing the mouth all that much. I'm going to give them some teeth. So I have unplugged my external mic. Can you hear me better? Yes, sir. Loud and clear. Okay. My theory is that the external mic is good, but it takes extra processing, and sometimes it can slow things down. At least I have something I can try. Okay, so all I'm doing is just giving a little bit of subtlety to those shapes, right? And because I haven't changed the mouth all that much in the past, that's about all I want to do for the bottom of the mouth. And then for the top of the mouth, I'm going to do some internal compositing, just like I did with the last layer. Grab the upper lip and the upper teeth and just duplicate that onto a new layer that I can then warp. And make less symmetrical. So maybe it flares up on one side. like that. Now with the eyes, same thing. I can make a new layer at any time. And I'm just building on top of it. So I'm still going to use clone stamp because that's kind of this impressionistic style I've adopted instead of just drawing directly. And I'm going to Squint the eye a little bit. So I think, Luma, you had asked before, you were working with the eyes, trying to make them close. So it, it depends, you know, what your assets are like. But one thing I often do is I just create a, an eyelid asset and just move that down or warp that down over on top of the eye. And those of you really interested in animation, you might know that animators will always have mirrors in their studios. Usually like a big mirror that they can look at from across the room for body poses and they'll model for themselves to see. And then usually a hand mirror to do little facial expression stuff. Because when you're 